Hey guys, it's me, Jeanette, aka Sweet Jean. Just calling with an update. It's been quite a while since my last one. Um, I have a different phone, so I'm not sure where to look. I don't know where the view, the camera pin is. But anyway, um, so excuse me if I'm not looking at you and I'm looking elsewhere. But, um, I was in the hospital on Super Bowl Sunday and I stayed there till past Valentine's Day. Um, a lot of my family was um, in Austin, Texas and me and my son stayed back. I just wasn't feeling up to going and um, we finally had the whole house to ourselves and the TV to ourselves. and. I don't know, it was just nice, but I wasn't feeling good, and um, something told me there was something that wasn't right, and so the day before Super Bowl Sunday, um, so it would have been Saturday, I don't know the date, um, I kept telling my son, you know, um, I need help with this, or I need help with that, like I was having difficulty doing like just regular tasks. And so I said, I told him that I didn't feel good. And then I told him I was going to go lay down. And then I said, if you could just come check on me, like every 30 minutes. I don't know. I just, something didn't feel right. And um, I didn't, I don't know. I just wanted him to check on me. Anywho, um, I'm going to dab my eyes because my eyes are real dry. So they keep over watering to counteract the dryness but anyway um so I went to sleep on Saturday night and then I woke up like a day and a half later in the hospital I have no memory I've lost all my memory for that day and a half and um what happened was my ammonia levels just went through the roof and whenever that happens, I get um, delirium, delirious, and I can't function. And um, so when I woke up, I had three nurses holding me down, literally like wrestling with me. And I was very, very, very combative because <sighs> they were trying to give me an enema to try and release so, so I can have a bowel movement to get all the ammonia out of me because our bodies um, get rid of ammonia through bowel movements and even though I take medication three times a day to help me go sometimes I don't go for a day or two and then on the third day usually it all comes out I know that's TMI but on this channel, since it's um, basically turned into just like my cancer journey, um, I don't sugarcoat a whole lot. Of course, I'll use different words instead of words that are offensive. You know, I'll use alternate words, but that you get the idea. So um, I was fighting and yelling and screaming. Because imagine waking up with three nurses holding you down on your side, trying to put something up your butt. <laughs> and so I kept yelling and screaming, you know, because I didn't know what was happening. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know where I was at first. And um, I was yelling, ow, 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 ow. Because it hurt my, it hurt me. But they didn't know if I was yelling because... I was delirious or yelling because I was actually hurting and I was both combative and hurting. Um, so I asked my son, once I got home and settled, I asked my son, I said, how did you know that I needed to come to the hospital? Like, cause he doesn't drive. He drive, he can drive like in the streets like the neighborhood um 
but he can drive like on the highway. He doesn't have his driver's license. He's never taken a driving test. He only um, knows from what I've taught him. And so um, he said that I was um, out of it and I wasn't making any sense. And he knew, he knew that I was going, you know, that I was getting the delirium because I've forgotten it before last summer. And I think I got it one time prior to that. It might have been two more times. So I don't know if this is the third or the fourth time that this has happened to me where I got delirious and I ended up in the hospital and and all that. So I said, um, how did I get there? Because my family was in Austin. And so he called my sister in Austin um, on Super Bowl Sunday and said, you know, something's wrong with Jeanette. She needs to go to the hospital, to the emergency room. And um, y'all need to come home. Well, the game had already finished, I think. I don't remember, but I, I'm going to switch arms. <laughs> Sorry. My hand's hurting. Um, and this phone is different than the one I had before, so I'm still trying to get used to it, and it's heavy. Anyhow, um, so he called my brother, my brother, and my brother was working, um, on the outskirts of town and it's a new job and he's on like probationary period so he couldn't just say I gotta go so then he called um, my niece's fiance and they live in the apartment complex across the street so she called him to come help because um, I wouldn't get in the car. I was yelling and I was screaming. And then um, he called my my brother's wife. Um, and they live like a mile down the road. And she was working. She works from home. And there was nobody else that could help. So she said, you know, I, I have to go. My sister-in-law needs me. She's sick. She needs to go to the emergency room. So she, uh, she came over and my, she, I was outside apparently yelling and screaming. I wouldn't get in the car and she basically, he, my son told her, watch my mom. I need to go in and get, you know, my shoes on and, um, my mom's wallet or, you know, whatever. I'll be quick. And so, um, I was yelling and I kept, they said I kept yelling the F word over and over and over loud. And then I wanted to walk away, like walk down the street. Um, and I don't remember any of this. So then, um, I refused to get in the car. I guess I was fighting them to get in. So then my son finally called 911. And so the firefighters came. And there were like four firefighters that got me in my um, sister-in-law's car. And I'm um, switching arms again. And so then um, they called off the ambulance. And they got me in my sister-in-law's car. And then um, I saw, she said that I saw my, um, her son, who he's three and he's like in a car seat. And I just started crying. I don't know why, but I was crying. And so um, then I, and then when we got there, um, my son had to go get a wheelchair and then put me in it and then wheel me in. And he asked my sister-in-law, Rita, if she was going to help. But she's like, well, I have my son with me. I mean, I, I can't. You're going to you're going to have to do it because Whenever I have to go to the emergency room, usually my sister or my mom take me, and he's never had to take me, so he was like lost, you know. So finally, he went in and found the emergency room and um, got me admitted. By that time, my sister and my mom and my dad got home, 
and dropped off my dad and my mom and my sister went to the emergency room and they had me in like the waiting area I guess not not the waiting area um they had me like they had called me in I guess they did my blood work I don't know but I have bruises all over both arms so I know I was being combative because that's how I am whenever I get delirious um, I fight everybody. I don't know what's going on. And I don't know. Like, I don't have any memory of it. But the only reason why I know is I have to ask, like, and then what happened? Or how did you know? Or what was I doing? Or what did I say? Or did I fall? Or, you know, because I've lost that memory for the day and a half, almost two days. And, um, Sorry, I kept messing with my mouth because I just ate a bite. I just took a bite of a sour pickle um, with chamoy, uh, like a Chinese candy with chamoy. So I have it in my tooth and I don't want to pick at my teeth. So I'm trying to loosen that little piece of uh, Chinese candy from between my teeth. But anyway, um, my sister and my mom got there. And kind of took over. And um, they were trying to do like a, a CT or an MRI of my brain. Because they wanted to see if the cancer had spread to my brain. And everybody kept telling them like she's delirious because her ammonia levels are high. And they're like well we just want to make sure that it's not something else. And they're like she's had it before this is the way she acts. And I was fighting and fighting and fighting. I wouldn't get in the little machine to do the CT scan. And um, my mom and my sister were like, Jeanette, just do it. Just, you know, uh, get on. They're trying to help you. And nope, I was yelling and screaming and fighting. And I wouldn't get out of the chair. They had to, like, pull me out. And I'm holding on to it, apparently. And then um, my mom and my sister um, were asked to go wait out in the hallway and then, um, so they waited out in the hallway and then all of a sudden they said I came out like five minutes later and I, they had already taken the images and I was, I don't know what they told me or how they got me in there, but apparently it was easier to do without my sister and my mom in there. Maybe I act a certain way when they're in there and when I'm with strangers, I have no idea. But, um, no, the cancer did not spread to my brain. And the lab work came back and it did show that I had my ammonia levels, like, really high. So then they put me in, they admitted me, put me in a room, and then that's when I woke up the next day um, with them trying to give me an enema. Um, Then I was like real groggy and I was opening my eyes, but I couldn't talk. Like my brain wanted to say what it wanted to say, but the words are weren't the words weren't coming out. I was like talking like mumble, mumble jumbo, <laughs> like instead of saying like I'm thirsty, I was like mm -hmm. and they were like, What do you want? Uh -huh, uh -huh. They're like, then they would ignore me. And I'm like, why are they ignoring me? I'm asking for water. But I didn't realize that I was mumbling and making no sense with my mouth. Like, my brain and my mouth were not connecting. So, anyway, um, every day uh, they put, like, these pads under my, um, on top of my sheets in the bed because um, they had given me the enema and they knew that I was going to start going soon. Um, and so it it did. And they're like, whenever you go number two, you have all the padding under you. Just push the button. And um, they gave me the little, you know, the nurse call control. And um, then I went number two. And, oh, it just felt disgusting to be laying there on number two. And so I'm looking for that thing because it's lit off me. And I'm, like, looking for the wire and pulling on wires. And 
they had a camera in there. <clears throat> I forgot what it's called, but it's this pole with the black um, thing on it. And that black thing is a camera and it keeps an eye on me because I needed to be watched like 24-7 um, with that condition. And then I could hear them saying, I could hear it, it beep and it said, don't pull that, don't pull that. And I couldn't talk very well to say, I can't find the remote, I can't find the control. And um, I'm... And I don't know why they didn't come and ask what was what I needed because I'm sure they saw me in the camera like searching and feeling around and looking for that thing. And then um, so I started uh, to say hello out the, the door because the door was open. So that way they can hear me calling them. And I was like, hello. And my throat was already raspy because of all the yelling and screaming that ha that I had been doing. Uh, hello, 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 <clears throat> over and over and over. And nobody was coming, and I was in laying in that stuff. So finally, someone came, and they're like, "Why are you yelling?" And I said, "I, I number two, I can't find control." button for nurse and then they're like they they saw the thing that was like under my hip and they're like it's right here ma'am and I'm like I couldn't find it and I, I did number two and I need someone to clean it and so they they brought in two nurses and they closed the door and then they they wiped me up and then put um, fresh um, pads. Like, they look like puppy pads, like the pee pads. But they put fresh pads under me and they're like, okay, ma'am, here's, here's the control. We're going to lay it on your chest. When you go number two again, call us and we'll get you cleaned up. So then I was like, okay, because by this time I'm able to... Uh, communicate a little bit um, I this thing is bothering me I have a piece of chumway candy between my teeth um, I'm going to put the camera up so I can try to get it Okay, got it. Anyhow, let me put it on another tissue. So, um, so there I was for like two days, two, three days, going number two on myself and having to push the button. And my throat got even more raspier and the doctor would come in and, hello, Miss Ortiz, how are you? And I said, I'm fine. And they said, do you know what day it is? I said, no, because I didn't know what day it was. I got lost. I lost a day and a half. She goes, do you know what month we're in? And I remembered that February, that Valentine's Day was coming around or that it was that day or I don't know. And I said, mm, February. They're like, okay, good, good, good. Do you know um, what year it is? And I was thinking, and I'm like, 23? They're like, okay. And that, that one took longer for me to figure out, because I was like, it's a new year. Um, what was last year? Like, I really had to think. It, it, it just wasn't coming to me fast enough. So they're like, okay, you're doing much better. We're glad to see that. And I was on a clear liquid diet excuse me and um so I kept having soups which I don't mind I love soup and um finally I was able to talk much better when they would ask me questions I would answer right away they're like you're doing really good ma'am compared to you know when you first got here 
and I said thank you but I was still going and then um finally I was like can can someone help me like in the bath so I could shower because I'm I'm dirty like I've been here for a few days going over to, and yes, I know you all are wiping me up and giving me like sponge bath, but I, I just want to sit under the water, like the warm water and just wash my body, wash myself. And they're like, well, you know, we don't want you to fall and hurt yourself because you're very fatigued already from the chemo that you're on. We've already talked to your doctor and et cetera, et cetera. And I couldn't even, they put like a, a portable potty in there. They're like, how about we bring you, because I, I said, why can't I go to the bathroom in the toilet? Uh, because they didn't want me to fall and hurt myself. And um, they were like, well, if we bring you a walker and we put the the bedside commode right next to your bed, Call us and we'll uh, make sure that you you get up and that you sit up. Then we'll leave, give you some privacy. And then um, when you're done, push the button. And then the button was right there on the bed because I was like literally flush with the bed, the bedside commode. And um, I was just happy to get out of bed because I was, my back was hurting. My tailbone was hurting. I wanted to get the blood moving in my legs because if I don't, I feel like I, it takes me longer to walk back to how I was before. So anyway, um, uh, the next day they saw that I was doing good getting up out of bed and, you know, getting on the toilet and then, um, the phys the PTOT like physical therapist and occupational therapist came and talked to me. Then um, they had me walk with the walker and go all the way around the nurses station, which I did. Um, it felt like a little bit like um, I would move, I would have to hold on tight because it felt like I was leaning too much to the right or leaning too much to the left. Like my balance was off. And so I would walk in like halfway down the hallway and I'd like hold on tight and, and stop and like readjust my my center and my balance. And so they were like, you're doing pretty good. You're doing pretty good. And so then when I went back to the room, I, um, you know, had my soup and then they changed my, my food to like um, a special, a special like not the full menu but like low carb and low sugar which is fine um so i was eating that and i was still going and in the morning when i got another nurse a new nurse i was like do you think i could take a shower if i if you walk with me with the walker and put the shower chair in there and so she was like, mm, uh, let me ask um, what your progress is. And I said, y'all have been giving me sponge baths and, and wiping me up and everything, but I just want to sit under the water. So finally she comes back and she's like, uh, and uh, she was holding towels and a gown and everything. So I knew that they said yes. And so she was like, okay, we'll work. I'm going to put the chair in there. Um, here are some towels, here's some foam soap, and blah, 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 you know. So, oh, I sat there for a little bit and just let the water run over me. It felt so good uh, just to finally, like, get a shower and, like, fresh gown. And so, um, on Valentine's Day, they, for lunch... They gave me a red carnation. And then for dinner, they put a little rubber ducky um, with the red shirt. And um, I think it said, it said something on it. I can't remember, but my son took it. He um, gave it to his cat <laughs> as a cat toy. 
Um, but I'll say, oh, that is so sweet. And then they give you like a little uh, dessert or like jello or something, you know, for something a little extra because it was Valentine's Day. And I was like, that was nice. So I spent Thanksgiving in the hospital. I missed it this year. And then I spent Valentine's in the hospital, which is fine because I don't have anybody. Um, a lot of you that have been following my journey for a few years now, I used to um, have a boyfriend. He w It was a long distance relationship. He lived in, in London. His name was or is Aries. But he was never going to move over here. Um, especially since his mom is sick. And I was never going to move over there. Because I just have such a huge family. And also, um, I had to have a hysterectomy so I couldn't have any more kids. Um, which I told him. And he said that he he's like, well, can't they like save your eggs or something? And I was like, I just, I think I lied. And I said, yeah, but it'll be very difficult because... I have cancer and blah, blah, blah. And he's like, well, we can get someone to carry the embryo to grow in their belly and we'll pay them. And um, I just let him talk, even though, like, he wouldn't listen. Like, anyway, so I had to let him go because, for one, he didn't have a future with me. And I wanted him to meet someone that would make him happy. Someone that would give him babies. You know, someone that lives in London. And I didn't want him to wake up one day and be like, I wasted my whole life and I don't have nothing to show for it. Um, so even though I, I loved him, I, I love him still. Hope everything is good and fine with him. But I had to break it off. Because he wouldn't, he wouldn't, um, I tried breaking it off before, but he was like, no, it doesn't bother me. No, I want to be with you. No, you're talking silly. And, um, so finally I was like, he doesn't have a future with me. And I have to break it off now. So it gives him a chance to meet somebody, to fall in love, um, to get married. You know, to have little ones running around. Because I couldn't offer any of that to him. And so I do love him and I do miss him. And I do wish that I knew what, how he was doing. But I have to, like, not go there because... Um, I don't know. I just feel bad that I heard him. I heard him real bad. But anyway, um... So, on Valentine's, I always remember him because he would send me flowers um, all the way from London. He would call and have them delivered to me here in, in my town, in my city. Anyhow, um, so I finally was well enough to go home. Um, then I came home. So, and that was like a few days after Valentine's Day. And, um, I got, I signed up for rehabilitation for my legs, like, uh, physical therapy, um, because my legs are so weak and I lose strength in them quickly. So I wanted to help. I wanted, I needed help with balance and I need help with strengthening my legs so I've been going a few times and they're working my legs out and my arms. Um, it's like a bicycle that you pedal and then they have little handlebars that you, that you go like that, you know, with both hands. And um, they had me on there for over 10 minutes, which is a lot for me because I don't usually do exercise like that. It's been a long time. The only, oh, something's in my eye. The only exercise that I get, oh, I feel like something, like, got in my eye. Anyway, I feel like um, the only exercise I get is walking. 
And whenever I do walk, I have to take breaks and I have to sit because my legs start getting shaky. And I don't want to like fall because it'll be very hard for I wouldn't be able to get up on my own. I don't think I would need some help. And usually my son's with me, so he could help me, but it wouldn't be easy. Um, so that's what's been going on with me. Um, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video in a few moments because it's already 30 minutes long. And um trying to think if anything else is new like as far as medication I still get chemo every three weeks I still get shots to help boost my red blood cells every week every Wednesday and I do rehab once a week for now um, on the days that I feel a little bit better uh, I'm able to go out with the family whenever like we have a barbecue or a birthday and like today I have my makeup on because we went to go eat at this place uh, Sammy's Sammy's restaurant and um, it's in a little town close to us just down the down the highway like 30, 20 minutes 30 minutes not even that far um yeah i think that's pretty much it that's switchy hands again sorry it's just this phone is just so much heavier it's like holding a brick <laughs> okay i'm over exaggerating but um thank you guys so much for all the comments that i get as far as keeping me in your prayers thinking about me asking for an update hoping that i'm okay um, I just haven't had the energy to record and I wanted to have at least some makeup on because the chemotherapy is like aging me and giving me all these wrinkles and hyperpigmentation and dark spots and freckles and a lot of times I don't wear makeup, but if I can wear makeup, I'd rather do a video when I have makeup on. I just feel a little bit more put together. But like I said, this video and what I say and what I show um, is pretty raw and to the point. And I don't really like to sugarcoat much, if anything at all. Um, so thank you so much for taking the time to watch my video. I very much appreciate it. Um, sorry, I'm getting a message from my son. Okay, there goes. Um, I lost my train of thought. If you're new to the channel and you'd like to follow my journey, you're more than welcome to, um, subscribe. Um, if you have any... Uh, encouraging words or prayers or good thoughts you can leave those in the comments I love to read those and any questions I'll get to as soon as possible it may take a couple of days or a day or two depending on if I've gotten my shots and I don't feel good or if I've gotten my chemotherapy and don't feel good or if I'm exhausted from the uh, the, for the, rehabil the um, exercise but anywho, um, thank you so much for joining me today and I will talk to you in the next video.